with AI, the nuance that was taught, the, the information that we've put out there, and we talk about ethics, we talk about biases, but as humans, we're, it's kind of our, our fault that AI is biased because it's kind of, you know, we're the people that put the information out there. So um, you know, hopefully everybody agrees with that. You know, like, uh, I, I, yeah. offer, I think it's been studied, like f- humans carry about 50 different biases with them at any, any given day. So like, I think what the way I see it is AI is kind of holding up a mirror to humanity and saying like, hey guys, get it right because we're all the same. We're all the same humans. Yes, we have different like personal beliefs or personal things that we do or mantras or whatever. But as a company, companies have their own culture too. And it's holding up a mirror to that as well. And I think companies need to pay attention to what's being seen because when you have the average person that works at a company leaving every two years anyway, why is that? And that's that's around every industry. I think we all are shaking our heads like we see this. And so if that's the norm, what happens when we have AI kind of watch past two years or past four years? What does that look like? And, and happy to you know hear what you guys have to think about that. Uh, you know, I think what we're going to see in the workforce is a lot more movement towards uh, business to business um, and small business development. We're going to see a lot of the bigger companies, you know, that are already are large. They're like, like you know, even though Clarin didn't work out for them, but they're doing hiring freezes. They're being careful about hiring because a lot of different lower level tasks can be automated out. It's going to cause people to focus on cultural fit, right? So it's always just, it's going to go all the way a hundred percent back to cultural fit. It doesn't matter if you're great at making powerpoints anymore because it's programs that can make powerpoints. Right. So we can't just keep somebody around just because they're good at what they can do only if we all can't stand them. Uh, and we're going to see a lot more people kind of going out and making their own company, companies that are subcontracting and collaborating. We're I see that now. I'm sure all the rest of the panel because we're in that AI space. You know, any project that I'm working on myself, it's really me and or two or three or four other companies. And we're coming together and co-collaborating as partners, as business partners and establishing a separate little business of all of our businesses working together to do this project or communities. You know, we've already seen that with like with Insight Jam, right? You have communities that are coming together and bringing business owners together. So that's what I think I see. The future of the employment space is a lot more small businesses opening up and working together and collaborating on the highest level because we can automate out all the other tasks. We don't need someone to spend their full time on that. And we see companies are going to have much smaller teams in general. That's what I think is the future. Okay. And Tony, did you want to jump in? I think you were saying something. Yeah. I, I think, look, I agree with all that. But I, I, think, I think, look, humans don't make optimal decisions, period. You know, we satisfy, you know, so basically it's good enough. So we do it. Now, what what this AI will start to do is it will start to remove the limitations of human knowledge and human constraints. And if we are clever enough, and we start to harness that. We actually can see organizations moving into far more strategic decision making because a lot of organizations, you know, they think they're doing st- strategy. They're not. They're just doing implementation. But I think there's a real opportunity here to go beyond what we know today, remove the limitations, and actually start to really understand the organization, its business, and its customers, and make great decisions that will actually see the organization survive into the future. There's a big part of that, right? So, I mean, you know, traditionally, everybody's been learning through through schooling and college, and they learn something really good to become a professional at that one thing. And it's it's looking like jack-of-all-trades and those that have passion and different things are really kind of leading into that. And so the one thing I see that's it's important is, is what we're doing now. We're, we're live, we're doing information, we're, we're being authentic with what we're talking to. Social media, like, do you think that everyone needs to be socially out there to show what they're doing, to show those passions? Is that the future of what people are going to be seeing? Yeah, I think uh, absolutely, Doug. I think, you know, previously we used to have this term, uh, fake it till you make it, right? But in today's day and age, you have to make it first in order to even apply for a job. You have to have like a portfolio. Um, and I think to uh, Jessica's uh, uh, earlier point, I think uh, she is right about some of the entry level, you know, like roles being uh, eliminated. But I also think, you know, like uh, AI agents will actually uh uh, create uh, new roles, right? Because uh, like with uh, uh, any uh, 
uh, new technology, uh, I think AI will also bring its own set of uh, new roles. Like for AI agents, I'm all be seeing some roles like uh, AI uh, operations manager, for example, right? And uh, orchestration of agents will also need a role. So while we are talking about some of the routine, maybe roles being eliminated, I also see a great opportunity uh, that AI will create a lot of new roles. So I think as tech professionals, we have to constantly make sure uh, we are um, uh, 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 staying update. Um, and uh, I also feel we have to like uh, prepare ourselves for the new roles uh, which will be created. Yeah, I completely agree with Jessica and Aparna as well, right? It's not like AI is going to remove the jobs, but uh, think, next thing in a positive way that it is going to create more jobs as well. The titles will be different, like uh, there will be prompt engineers and there will be AI ops managers or AI workflow engineers and all, right? So instead of engineers uh, focusing on how to save jobs or how to not let AI take over, but instead engineers will think more about uh, teaching agents what is good actually uh, in terms of uh, developing more models and creating more agent uh, agentic systems. I mean, there's a question there, right? So like, do we need more prompt engineers? Because as it's going with chain of thought that came out and, and how some of these reasoning models are actually leveraging that and saying like, you'll ask it a question, you'll tailor your need, and it will then ask you questions to kind of like get a better idea, fine tune it a little bit. You know, it, when companies are looking at bringing in like citizen developers and using AI agents to really drive more engagement, more collaboration, more things forward, is, is that... Is that the future? Like, do you know if we're going to say we need all these different jobs and, and we need these prompt engineers? Like, do we? Because like we needed that a year ago, but we don't really need that now. And we need we still need some probably on the data data scientist side and whatnot. But like on those jobs, like jobs will be gone, but not all jobs. And so, like, what are some of the other things that, that anybody here is seeing? Well, I, I, I think these, some of these jobs are going to be enhanced. Well, you, you're saying we don't need prompt engineers, but I think you need more subject matter experts that that understand prompt engineering from the aspect of training and testing algorithms and to, uh, you know, the, the generative AI piece, and to make sure that um, we, we understand what the uh, end, end results are, what decisions are being made by the, by the uh, uh, algorithms and how did they get there. Having someone that's subject matter experts in these areas are going to play a key role, just like we see um, the generative AI being able to do code, right? The right Python code, C plus plus whatever code. You still need a subject matter expert to understand and optimize that code, understand that code to a point where, hey, I see gaps in what the what the program has been has delivered. Let's optimize this for our um, environment and things like that. So the the positions are going to shift. And it's going to be more critical thinking, more SMEs in these areas, driving how these agents and other AI applications actually be tra uh, are trained and um, actually work. And so we can work better to deliver what we intend. Mm -hmm.